Hey everyone, Nick D'Arbertis here teaching you financial modeling. And today we're going to go over an example of doing visualization in Excel as part of our lecture series on visualization and understanding complex results. So we're going to work with the dynamic salary retirement model that we've built out in the first part of this course. And we're going to now add visualization to the Excel side of that model. So I'm going to jump over to the Excel for the dynamic salary retirement model. So we already have our main output coming here used to retirement, but it would be nice to be able to see here also what do the salaries look like over the time? What do the wealths look like over time? And being able to see that very quickly in a very digestible format. Of course, we could just bring over the salaries and the wealths into a table and show that on the inputs and outputs tab as well. But it's not going to be easy to just glance at these numbers and understand patterns in those numbers over time. It would take a lot of really uh, closely looking at the numbers to understand those patterns. So instead, let's produce some visualizations of those numbers. So looking at the salary, uh, we want to make a plot of the salary over time and all of that is going to come from insert and then this charts section of the insert uh, tab in the ribbon. And the first thing that we want to do is we want to highlight the data that we want to plot. So we want to plot the salaries. We don't care about any of these intermediate calculations. We just want the time and the salaries. So one way to go about that is to just select those two columns before you go to create the chart. So uh, the easiest way to do that, start over here, and then on Windows it's going to be holding Shift and Control. On Mac I believe it's Shift and Command. And then you press down and it's going to highlight that entire column for you. And then you can come over here to the salary cell, hold Control, that would be Command on Mac and click and now you can see we've got this whole column as well as this cell and now that our last selection was on this cell we can do that same shift and control or command trick hit down again and now we have both of these two columns selected so from there i always like to go to recommended charts first because that will usually tell you the best charts for your particular data um, and you can look through uh, the recommended charts for what you think is appropriate for your data. Um, but then if you don't see something that you like, then you can go over to this All Charts tab and explore through all the different options that you have. But here the recommended chart uh, did bring up a nice representation for this data, which is a simple line chart. So here we can see the salaries over time. Uh, going up. So let's go ahead and hit OK to insert that chart. So now we can see we have this chart over here. Now I said that we wanted to have the chart over on the inputs and outputs tab, but now I have it on the salary tab because that's where the salaries were. So uh, the reason that I made it over here is because it's very easy now to just click this and I'm going to hit Control X, that would be Command X on Mac. You can see it disappears because I have now cut the plot and now I can paste it, Control or Command V over here and everything stays linked together. So you know now if I change how often the promotions are, then you'll see that immediately changing in the graph as well. Everything is still linked together. And this, I think, is generally easier than trying to start a chart on this page and then reference over to another page to get the data. Uh, one other way that we could have selected the data to produce the plot is just to select everything and then uh, insert the chart and then just uh, let it be created. And then after it's been created, you can then see uh, here where we can actually adjust the data which is included. So now, same way, it also only includes the salary. 
Uh, so now we have this chart of salary and we can see um, the salary over time. This is already a lot more clear what's going on. We can see those discrete jumps every time that there's a promotion. One thing that's not so clear just looking at this is what, uh, what this axis means. Uh, since the plot says this is salary, it's fairly clear that this is a line of salary and, and these values represent the amount of the salary. But here it's not clear what these numbers mean. So you definitely want to add an axis title for this. So this plus over here that comes up whenever you click on the graph is how you can easily add additional elements to the chart. And here the element we want to add is going to be a primary horizontal axis title. So we add that and then we can double click in here to change out the name of that. And this is going to be uh, time in years. And that way it's a lot more clear what this actually represents. So now this looks like a pretty good plot for salary, but maybe we wanted to display this in a different way. So it is possible to change the chart type after you've created it. Also, uh, it's possible to copy plots so that you can you know, play around with different versions until you settle on something that you like. So I'm gonna go ahead and just copy Control C and then paste Control V uh, this plot. And now we can see we had the same exact plot. Everything is still going to be linked together to the model. And now we can click on this plot and we can go to the chart design tab and that allows us a few different things here. One, it's very easy to pick a different style for the plot um, just up here. And then the other is uh, you can change the chart type here as well. So, you know, instead of a line, maybe we want a scatter plot with, uh, with connected lines. Then it's more clear that we have observations for each year and not necessarily you know, completely filled out in this axis. Um, or maybe instead you wanted to represent this with um, you know, maybe something like uh, columns instead that can get at the same exact kind of concept. Um, so it's easy after you've already created the chart to go back and switch the type of chart as well. So now that we've seen how to do that, let's go ahead and bring over the chart for wealth as well. So coming over to the wealth tab, then we just do the same thing that we did previously. We're just going to uh, grab these two uh, columns here, the time column and the wealth column. Once again, to insert recommended charts here. And let's go with the line chart here. Uh, and we can see also the wealth over time. I'm gonna add that title for the horizontal axis that this is time in years. And then going to cut this so we can bring it over to the inputs and outputs tab. So now we have both the salary and wealth. And of course you can uh, you know, drag these to change the size uh, so that everything will fit on the screen appropriately. And now we can see everything will change together. So it's a much easier way to get a quick overview of what's going on in the model. And one other way we could have gone about this is right now we have separate graphs for the salary and the wealth. We could have potentially combined them into the same plot because they have the same axes, right? They're both over time. They're both talking about a dollar amount in the y-axis, so it could make sense to have them on the same plot. Now, the reason that I didn't do that is because the scale of these axes is quite different. For, for the x, it's the same, but for the y, you can see the wealth axis here is actually 10 times as large as the salary axis. So if we plot these two on the same plot, then we're barely going to be able to see the salary line. So we can just quickly see uh, the example of that. If I just grab 
the salary and the wealth uh, here to put onto one chart that um, we create that chart and it basically looks like the salary it doesn't really do anything. It increases, but it looks almost like it's totally linear. You can barely tell that the promotions are going on in there, whereas the wealth just totally eclipses that by the end. So it um, doesn't really make sense to put these two on the same plot when it's so much more clear what's going on when they're on separate plots because of the different scale of the axes. So that's an overview of how to do visualization in Excel. Next time we're going to come back and learn about Pandas and Python, which is going to give us a table kind of data structure, and we're going to start working towards visualization in Python. So thanks for listening, and see you next time.